Hello everyone. Welcome to Smart Interviews. I hope you're doing good. In this video, we are going to solve this problem by Nutri cameras. You can find the problem link in the description. I recommend you pause the video here, go to the problem, look at the problem and try to come up with an approach. Okay. Let's understand how we solve this problem. First, let's understand the problem statements. It is given that you uh, you are given a binary tree. In this binary tree, you have to place cameras. So in each node, if you place a camera in a node, the camera is going to watch the current node in which it is placed. It is also going to watch its parent node and its child node. You have to find out the minimum number of cameras that you have to put so that all the nodes can be watched. So how do we solve this problem? To solve this problem, we are going to divide the nodes into three types. So what are these three types? The three types will be type one uh, or type zero, where there is no camera and the current node is not being watched. That is the type zero. Then you have type one, where there is no camera, but it is being watched by one of its parent node or the child node. And the next type will be type two, where it is, there is a camera in the current node. Since there is a camera in the current node, it will definitely be watched. So these are the three types of nodes that we consider. Now, how do we, okay, we have the three types of cameras that we, uh, three types of nodes that we have. Now, how do we use this? Each node can be one of these three types. Now, how do we determine which type it is? We determine by looking at these child nodes. If the child nodes are both, if any one of the child node is type zero, if any one of the child node is type zero, that means one of its child node doesn't have a camera and it is also not being watched. If that is the case, then there should definitely be a camera in this current node so that it can watch the current node and its child node. So if one of its child node is type zero, the current node has to be type two. And if, if one of its nodes is type two, that means there is a camera in one of its child nodes, then the current node is also being watched. So the current node should be type one. Right. So what are the conditions that we have? We have, uh, let's say we have getting the type of the left child and we are getting the type of the right child. Then if type of the left child is equals to two, or if the type of the right child is equals to two, then the current node should be type one. That means if the left child or right child has a camera in it, the current node need not have a camera because it is already being watched. Similarly, if the current node, if the left node doesn't have a camera and it is not being watched and as well as the right node doesn't have a camera and is being watched, then it should return two. That means we have to place a camera in the current node. So we have to return two. Now that we are placing a camera here, I should also increase the number of cameras. I will have a count variable which will count the number of cameras and it will increase the count by one. If it is not type two and if it is not type one, then obviously it will be type zero. This will be the main logic behind our code. Now, how do we get the left child and the right child's um, how do we get the left child's and right child's type? Let's say there is this um, function called solve, which will take the 
node which will take the root node. We can use the same solve function recursively to get the type of the left subtree or ref child node and the type of the right child node. So I can simply do int left is equals to solve on root dot left and int right is equals to solve on root dot right. I got the left sub uh, left no sub child's um, value and right sub child's type. Now I can use these two to find out the current uh, nodes type. This is the function main logic. Now what about the base condition? Any recursive function should have a base condition. What about the base condition for this? So base condition you will get when if node equals to null. If node equals to null, what should you return? You, could, you should either return 0 or 1. You cannot definitely return uh, 2 because you cannot ca have a camera in null node. So you have to either return a 1 or a 2. What should we return? Should we return 1 or should we return 2? To understand, let's look at a leaf node. So it can, when the root is null, it can either return 1 or it can return 0. What should we return? To understand what we should return, we should first understand what should be the type of the leaf node. Now, should the type of the leaf node be 0 or 1? If you look at this, there should not be a cam, there need not be a camera in the leaf node, right? Because we can simply have a camera in the parent of a leaf node, which will watch these two nodes together, these two leaf nodes together. So if we have a camera in the parent of a leaf node, then we don't have to have a camera in the leaf node which can be type zeros. So if the leaf node has to be type zero, the null nodes, which are when there is no nodes, it has to return a one. So when the node is null, it will return one. This is the pseudocode or code for your problem. Let's try to write the code and see if it will work. Okay, let's create the function solve int solve which will take tree node root and it will again recursive we will call the same function recursively on the left side and the right side. So int l is equals to solve uh, on root dot left and similarly int r is equals to solve on root dot right uh, then if l is equals to 0 or r equals to 0 um, i will return 2 before return 2 i should also increase my count so i should create a global count variable int count should be equals to zero. Next, similarly, if L is equals to two or R is equals to two, that means if there is a camera in the left subchild or in the right subchild, I will simply return one because the current node is already being watched. Otherwise, I will return zero. Now base condition, if root is equals to null, I'll simply return one like we discussed. Next, um, we should call this function in the main function. So I will say um, solve on root node. Now there is one edge case here that we should think about. What if the there is only one node which is the root node what happens if there is only one node which is the root node if there is only one node what will happen 
you only have the root node. So this root node will get uh, one from the left side. It will get one from the right side. So this will be zero. So since this is going to be zero, we are not going to increase the count for this. We are not going to increase the count for this. So your sum will be zero itself or the count will be zero itself. You have to increase the count for this case, this type of edge case. So what I'll do is I will check if this solve will give me zero. If solve gives me zero, I will increase my count and then I will return count. Let's see if this will run. It runs on the sample test cases. Let's submit. And it works. Okay guys, see you in the next video. Thank you for watching. Please like, share and subscribe for more such content.